Good morning, people. Um, by now, I hope that you would start to discover, uh, once we're kind of peeling away some of the cultural baggage that afflicts this whole practice, and we look at it very concisely and clearly, that um, magical practice in its most simplified form is really the art of paying attention and understanding um, the consequences of circumstances to intimately have that conversation in relation with reality, to have a conversation with it, to allow it to speak through you, and of course to be an advocate on behalf of it. This is a very simple, sincere, and intimate sort of practice that can be very effective in creating a great deal of uh, profound connection if you take it on seriously. Um, it's important that when we delve into the literature that surrounds this sort of thinking that we do not get distracted by some of the more popular and conspicuous and obvious um, examples of um, failure, perhaps, or charlatanism, or outright fraud, in some cases simple misguided ego projection trying to take personal experience and expand it to systems that are beyond what one's personal experience might actually support. I think it's important to keep these things very close and very simple and very immediate because that's what keeps them real. I wouldn't be all galloping out to uh, get involved in Trismus Gistus or Solomon or the rest, okay? That's um, way, 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 way down the road. Keep it close. Keep it personal. And simply learn to... Uh, have an intimate dialogue with the life you live first, and whatever you can expand from that is uh, your business. But I should caution at this particular moment in history to start to awaken and to turn one's senses outward with the interest in um, finding relation. Um, at this particular moment in history, there are unusual hazards there. I mean, certainly, it's always been referred to in the, at least the Western literature, that one does, walking this path, encounter a dark night of the soul, or a negredo, or a dark period where one has to confront um, some of the fundamental elements of existence, especially human existence and some of those truths are not attractive. At this moment, um, they're only, not only not attractive, but extremely um, present, all right? Uh, a good example of that comes to me uh, here over the last couple of weeks. I'm out uh, teaching Adrian how to pick wild mushrooms, something that I've done for a lot of years. And this is the first year in a number of times due to um, our changing weather and climate that we've had a good season for picking mushrooms. It is something she's not done before. Um, so we're walking down some of our most favorite trails that we hike around here uh, seeking to do that poking along, paying a lot of attention, more attention than normal, to the paths that we walk and what's there. So as we go along, it is interesting to me to see the change in perception and reality that Adrian is experiencing, is experiencing through learning to pick mushrooms, and that is surprisingly, not so much about mushrooms, although we found some, but rather that because you choose to seek to turn your senses outward and involve yourself with mushrooms, you encounter 
on practically every other stride, trash and bags of dog shit. Just literally everywhere. Just literally everywhere. I mean, I promise you that you could probably not make three strides without uncovering, encountering a plastic bag of dog shit. This is a reality that she was unaware of because her senses were not turned outward to engage in the very interesting world of mushrooms. And by choosing to do so, she has been forced to confront the fact that there's a tremendous culture of disrespect that we live within and the reminder of um, that disrespect is just ubiquitous. That's the cost that one is forced to bear if one dares to be courageous, to turn the eyes outward and try to have a uh, growing authentic relationship with reality. And this is uh, a problem that is obviously not limited to the realm of simply picking mushrooms, but in perhaps any, any venue that I can imagine, the lack of disrespect, if not outright exploitation or destruction, dominates. I don't need to point out the obvious examples. And it is incredibly difficult, not only in um, being aware of the crisis itself, but, but not only that, that the crisis itself is managed and created and even often advocated for or against by individuals blind to the fact that in their ego projection, once again, if not just complete cynicism, even if they're attempting to advocate for a constructive end or often doing so, not for the end, but for the purpose of achieving status and return by exploiting the crisis itself. The idea of having an intimate relationship with reality and uh, in essence channeling the life process forward towards its end of um, greater abundance and uh, complexity, that is so far from the conversation in most people's minds uh, as to be nearly absent. And if one attempts to change one's perspective from our cultural conditioning to one that is actually affirmative towards life rather than exploitive and destructive, one will have to confront this reality And you'd better be well prepared to do so. This is why I think it's important, and there are good examples um, in the historic literature of these sorts of being of practices being commingled with various traditions. Um, some of them warrior traditions or otherwise that also focus on in parallel the necessity to um, in a very real physical sense develop um, su sufficient physical strength to um, bear up under and in fact confront these negative aspects uh, of life when when you encounter them. And I think that there's good reason to do so, especially in this moment, uh, to try to take these things on as a purely academic or intellectual exercise, I would say are probably doomed to failure. Um, it's worth understanding that that might be, a, again, a simple ego projection in general. We, we are asserting through our model here that that physicality that you call your body is in fact the interface 
that life uses to give a rise to your experience of existence and then interact through the world. I mean, you are the hands of the universe from this model. It's good to keep them strong and to uh, move courageously and dynamically because otherwise the difficulties one faces are, are too much. Anyway, on a very grim morning here in the world with atrocities unfolding in front of us, I thought I would share that with you. Um, our task here, again, is to open our eyes and to reach outward, not turn inward and hide. And um, that's not easy to do. Cheers, people.